right. Now, what we put on the screen, it'll make the backs of their necks crawl. Are you going to pictures this afternoon? Yes. Hmm. Extraordinary. So am I. Would you like to go downtown with me to the movies tonight? The empty screen. It's like a blank piece of paper in front of a writer or an empty canvas before the first daub of paint is applied. But the screen is a two-way street. It watches the audience as the audience watches it. But movies are more than just images flashing on a screen with audiences sitting in their seats watching them. It has a life of its own. It receives images, it projects images. The act of needing to see is as powerful as actually seeing. In Fritz Lang's 1922 Dr. Mabuza the Gambler, Mabuza, in one of his many disguises, hypnotizes an audience into seeing what can't possibly be real. A perfect metaphor for the movie-going experience. Mass hypnosis, a shared reverie, a dream that can't be undreamed. The image can't be contained by the narrow stage and spills out into the theater. Are they all sharing the same dream? Is the filmmaker the hypnotist? Probably. Conversely, you can sometimes dream yourself into the frame. Buster Keaton does just that in his 1924 Sherlock Jr. But he becomes an unintended pawn and victim in the vagaries of film editing. In a brilliant and hilarious sequence that might have been written and could have been written by Samuel Beckett 30 years later. Godard, in the 1963 Les Carabiniers, as a rube who's never seen a film before, experienced a movie for the first time. He recreates the response to the Lumiere Brothers film, The Train Coming Into the Station. Our first-time moviegoer has even more difficulty distinguishing between real space and space on the screen. He changes his seat, hoping to get a better view. No luck. Despite whatever the camera angle is, it's still merely two-dimensional and unchangeable. But wait, I think I can... Why can't I see into the tub? Maybe if I get closer, I can... Or jump up and look inside. He single-handedly defines the frustrations of the illusionism of film-going and the passivity of film-goers in relation to the screen. But behind the screen, there's only another screen, the back wall of the movie theater. But even if we love the images or love what they represent, they can never love us back. They will never reciprocate. They are only images on a reflective surface. Sound adds another dimension. I'm missing my favorite scene here. We mistakenly think if we know the dialogue by heart, we can enter their world. 
but it's only proof of how deeply they enthrall us, subsume us. We have become part of their dream. Wait, wait, you fat fuck, look at you. What do you mean? I don't understand. What do you mean, kill you? Me? You fuck my wife. What? You fuck my wife. But it's not enough to know the words, or even the words and the music. And even when we sing along, and even dance along, it's their song we're singing, and their dream we're sharing. So while there's moonlight and music and love and romance, the act of movie going and that the fiction that we're watching is real is exploded well, of course you will oh will you go before it's too late before he shoots you today <laughs> the most ironic commingling of the fiction within the fiction and the let us say real reality occurs in Hitchcock's 1942 saboteur at last you rat in the grass hey, stop that run Wilbur run before he gets your range I think I got it now Get out before I shoot again. Run, Wilbur, run, quick. No one, including us, is quite sure which soundtrack is the real one. Ah! Run, Wilbur. My husband, he's shot. going to shoot again. I'll kill the rattles of the last thing I do. He was only kidding, I swear. Yeah, I'm only kidding, too. The fictional plot of the movie within the movie overtakes the real movie. The Hall of Mirrors reflects all the way to infinity and back. I still can't get over the fact that 24 hours ago I was in an Egyptian tomb. I didn't know any of you wonderful people. And in Woody Allen's The Purple Rose of Cairo, it finally happens. My God, you must really love this picture. You've been here all day, and I've seen you here twice before. You mean me? Yes, you, you, you. This is the fifth time you're seeing this. I gotta speak to you. <gasps> the actor abandons the screen to join the spectators. Get back! Around. Go on without me. We can't continue Who with the story. It's a Cecilia. And then, of course, there's Godar. There's always Godar. We watch the screen as if it's a guide for living, or we look at it as a crystal ball, as if it can foretell our own future. she's watching another film. For example, this. Or maybe this. On allait souvent au cinéma. L'écran s'éclairait et on frémissait. Mais encore plus souvent aussi, on était déçu. Ce n'était pas le film dont nous avions rêvé. Ce n'était pas ce film total que chacun parmi nous portait en soi. Ce film qu'on aurait voulu faire. Ou, plus secrètement sans doute, que nous aurions voulu vivre. that goes on forever, an empty screen. Silencio.
Thank you.